All right, guys, we're going to do a rarity. We're going to look at a sun cut knife that I just don't like. Please, here's a disclaimer. Everything I'm about to say is my opinion. Your mileage may, may vary. You may love this knife. It's not based on fact. It's based on my opinions, which a lot of you guys share. So let's turn this around and let's take a look at why I don't like the Bronte. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at this is the Sencut Bronte. Um, this came from Jared, and I got to tell you, it, it it's just not a knife for me. I'm going to tell you, there are some good things about it, and then we'll talk about the, the stuff that makes it not a knife for me. But it's based on my opinions, like I said in the intro. Uh, and I would also ask you guys, please like, share, subscribe to the videos. It's absolutely the best thing you can do to help a channel. So let's go ahead and crack into this. So this is a very well-made knife from a company that is an offshoot of We and So you had We, then you had Civivi, and now you have Sencut. So Sencut is their budget brand. You can see this is a 9CR18 MOV. I don't dislike that steel. It's actually not a bad steel for a lot of things. Uh, it's got a really decent blade shape, really nice behind the edge thickness. It's done in wood scales. Uh, there's a lot of weight reduction. It's done in a frame lock and the action on it really decent. It's got a nice front flipper. That is one of the good things about it. This one is one that I can absolutely front flick uh, or index finger flick. And it's got a fuller that you can reverse flick off of. The weight distribution, really good. It's nice and neutral balanced. And they, like I said, they've done a good bit of weight reduction on that liner. And locked up nice and tight. And you got really good, smooth, free action on this. Cutting wise, I've been cutting with it for a little bit this morning. It's doing a fairly decent job. Like I said, nice, thin behind the edge profile. Slightly radius from heel to tip with this asian inspired japanese or i'm sorry chinese ring sword inspired uh blade that comes down a lot like a couple other knives like a higo no kami and things like that it's a very functional blade you do still have a piercing tip but it is radius and nicely done enough that it feels a lot more akin to a straighter blade like you what you'd see in a warren cliff and things like that the lockup is really really good and it has an interesting stop pin situation going on so the stop pin does not ride in a track at all so this is your stop pin it's attached to your blade and it rotates around outside it's not actually touching anything a lot of times that's slotted into a liner uh and it, it just it, it's kind of a unique way that they've done this where it's exposed it definitely is going to make it easier for you to keep that clean when they're enclosed inside a track a lot of times they get dirty and then you have to disassemble a knife to clean it to get that track cleaned out and you don't have to do that with this and you also have really good access to your bearings so you don't have to take it apart to lubricate it you can just put a drop of oil there and let the capillary action suck it down in between the liners and the scale so there are some really good things and I, like i said it's got a really good front flipper not a fan of front flippers this is a good one with that being said there's a lot of stuff about this knife that I'm just not a fan of. So we're going to turn this around and look at my opinion, guys, my opinion. I'm not stating fact, my opinion of the things that are not good about this knife. So let's turn this around. Flip side of the story, flip side of the knife. So first things first, the one that really does bother me is the access to the lock bar. It's kind of tight. It's a really thin lock bar. They didn't need to do this jimping on it. It actually, that jimping kind of detracts and it's kind of difficult to get all the way over to the unlock position. You got to get it all the way over like that, even though the detent's not all that strong. It's fairly strong spring tension, but it just really isn't that great. Uh, at the detent, which is the next thing I was talking about, if you're doing the top flipper, front flipper, using your index finger, it's fine. It snaps out. But where you run into a problem is this is a fairly soft detent. I'm going to show you what I mean. I can, slay, I can slap that open just by shaking it out. Um, not something I like in a knife. If you can do that, then what happens is this is soft. You can reverse flick off of it, but you really got to load up on it to do it. I would prefer this detent to be a lot heavier. And I can't figure out why it is like that. Because like I said, the spring, the, the tension on the lock bar is fairly strong to then have weak detent. So I don't know if maybe the detent ball does not drop all the way in like you'd want it to. See how it stands up? Um, it does drop, but watch. It drops in, but it really doesn't drop in as far as other knives. So you got a soft detent. The next thing, uh, see, trying to reverse flick it. 
I don't like the way the handles are done. They're really straight. A lot of times I like these straighter knives. On this one, it feels out of sorts. It just doesn't feel stable. It doesn't feel the way I want in hand. Um, it just doesn't have that. Like I said, you've got access to that lock bar there. And a lot of times that winds up being a choil. For some reason, this knife just does not feel great in my hands. Next thing, it feels, I hate to say it. I hate to say it because I love so much of the Civivi and Sencut stuff. It feels cheap. It does. That's my biggest thing. It feels cheap. And then we get into this. This pocket clip is not great. It really moves a lot. Uh, I did tighten the screws down on it. But the problem is you just can't get it tight enough to keep it from moving. Like it's not just that it, it wiggles. It's actually like moving around and it's because it's not pocketed. If they had just cut out this area and sunk it down in and allowed it to sit further down in the wood, it would be a lot better. And then the final thing is I did take these screws out and they're really not that long. If you look, the screws that hold the pocket clip in, this one goes into that spacer, into that uh, that standoff. It definitely does. It goes into that, but this one doesn't. And so it doesn't have as much purchase. And it felt like I was going to strip that screw. It just didn't feel like it went far enough into the liner. And if you look in there, let me zoom in a little bit. You can't see the end of the screw in that hole. If that screw was a little bit longer, it would have went further into the liner and just flushed that up. And I think that would have let it, there's not a lot of thread going into the liner, which is why this still moves. Even though I did tighten it, I was afraid I was going to strip that screw out. It just barely is into the liner. So all those things together, just saw, it, it just winds up being a lot of things just make it not a knife for me. It's a good, well-built knife. Don't get me wrong. With the, with the exception of the little screw issue here, it's a very well-built knife. It's well-designed. It's well-thought-out. The flipper on it, the top flipper, is just brilliant. But access to the lock bar, the actual lock bar tension and things like that make this a no for me. I will put a link down here if you guys like it. I think this would make a good work knife for a lot of people. And uh, I forgot to mention it. A uh, spot for a lanyard that is not a lanyard hole. So, and the wood is very attractive, but yeah. Aside of the attractiveness and things like that, it's just not a knife for me. So let's turn this around. We'll do some final thoughts and I'll send you out about your day. Yeah, guys, like I said, I'm sure that there's a ton of you guys that love this knife and the way it cuts, it's not a bad knife. It really isn't. It's just not a knife for me. So we're going to leave it at that. If you're going to jump into the comments and start telling me I'm wrong, well, you're not going to change my opinion. So just don't. Um, guys, you know I have sponsors. You guys know I have affiliates. Go check those out. There's discounts built into a couple of my sponsors, Coffee Bear Coffee Tempered Trail. The affiliate links absolutely support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout. The Amazon store, take it, pin it your browser, use it for all your shopping. The membership down below, I do a lot of stuff for those guys. There's a private Discord server that no one uses. Please start using the Discord server, guys. There are giveaways that I do, exclusive content, and a premium sharpening tutorial series. And also, there is a public Discord down below in the description. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section. But your birthday, happy birthday. I'll see you in the next video.